the Spoon Boy. Although he was only on screen for a few moments, he played an instrumental part in Neo's growth as the One. There is no spoon. The character remains mysterious, and we never knew what became of him in Matrix Resurrections. However, some clues lead us to believe that Spoon Boy met a tragic end. What was the Spoon Boy's ultimate fate? Let's find out. Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. To help us understand who and what the Spoon Boy is or was, and what could have happened to him, let's take another trip down Matrix memory lane. After Thomas Anderson took the red pill, he was awakened to the real world. There he discovers that a quasi-religious structure existed, where many of its machine-fighting soldiers frequently visited a mystical woman known as the Oracle. The Oracle was responsible for guiding these people to their destiny, and they faithfully trusted her, especially her star pupil, Morpheus. The man drove his girlfriend Niobe away because of the Oracle's prophecies. Morpheus had to find the One, and he was willing to sacrifice anyone, including himself, to achieve this goal. Niobe never forgave Morpheus for this. But how come these militants blindly listened to someone who lived inside the Matrix? And how was this quasi-religion created in which the Oracle is its prophet? The Matrix Reloaded answers these questions. We learned that the Oracle is part of a system where the One is meant to create a new world with new believers. Neo's predecessor was the one who told the humans that they should go to the Oracle and ask for guidance. And no one questioned him. After all, he was the one. The Oracle's purpose as an intuitive program was to better understand the human psyche. And with this knowledge, she helped the architect stabilize the Matrix. In case it's not obvious enough, the Oracle was never on the side of the humans. Or at least she wasn't until near the end of the third movie. The Oracle was a program that the Architect used to help stabilize his creation, so he wouldn't lose many of his crops. She was the mother of the Matrix. If I am the father of the Matrix, she would undoubtedly be its mother. The Oracle. Understanding this, we can now determine what could have happened to the Spoon Boy. We see the Spoon Boy for the first time when Neo goes to visit the Oracle, and his words were decisive for Neo to become the One. The Spoon Boy explained to him that the reality of the Matrix is false, or at least that's what he hinted at, important information that Neo needed to remember so that he could activate his abilities in the simulation. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. When Neo went to speak with the Oracle, she knew exactly when he would arrive and what would happen. And don't worry about the days. What days? That days. The Oracle not only knew that Neo would have a conversation with the Spoon Boy, but she probably had the boy in her apartment specifically to help activate what was inside Neo. But this wouldn't be the last time we'd hear from the Spoon Boy. After The Matrix, a comic book was published that expanded the story of this child. The Spoon Boy was in Mega City, and he sees an advertisement for a woman artist who is exhibiting her sculptures at a special event. Those sculptures are of the Sentinels that look exactly like the ones that exist outside the Matrix. In the comic, the citizens of Mega City who went to this exhibition were horrified at these pieces of quote-unquote art. The monstrous figures were causing them to have panic attacks. Why? Because they subconsciously recognized these monsters, and seeing them in the exhibit triggered that fear. The artist of this exhibition affirmed that her inspiration came to her one night in her dreams. She dreamt that she woke up in a pool filled with a strange pink liquid, and that these beings were watching and protecting her. She thought that the monsters were guardian angels. Obviously, we know better. We know what really happened. The woman simply woke up for a few moments, saw the real world, and the sentinels reconnected her. However, somehow she kept the memory of seeing the sentinels. Later, the Spoon Boy arrives at the exhibit and creates an illusion for the artist. A vision where she sees her creations come to life and starts to attack her guests. She saw how the machines were killing people. The monsters then went after her, but she escaped them. After running away from the exhibit, she arrives at what seems to be a cemetery where the origin of these sentinels is explained to her and the fear that she is supposed to feel toward them begins to settle in. 
The comic book concludes with the spoon boy telling the woman that she must understand what she saw, not just believe the lies. The ability to bend spoons, travel within the matrix, and modify the simulation to gain uninvited access to the exhibit are incredible abilities that only the one could achieve. However, Spoon Boy's ability to create visions is unique to him, and this is what leads us to suspect that the Spoon Boy is not acting in favor of the humans. We think that he can create illusions because he works for the Matrix, or because he is part of the system. We never saw Spoon Boy fight on the side of the humans per se, nor did he lend any assistance beyond meeting Neo that first time, so now we have a pretty good idea of what his purpose is. We strongly believe that the Spoon Boy is not human, he is a matrix program that fulfills at least two functions. The first is to educate the one. When Neo arrived at the Oracle's apartment, the boy had a collection of bent spoons. The number of spoons were corresponding to the number of the ones that had existed before Neo. Remember that Neo was the sixth one. So maybe the spoon boy gave the there is no spoon spiel to Neo's predecessors as part of the plan in preparing them for their interactions with the Oracle and later, the activation of the Anomaly's code. And how does this activation occur? By dying, of course. Neo had to die so that the code could be activated within him. Trinity's kiss would then revive him. If the Spoon Boy hadn't convinced Neo that there was no spoon, he probably wouldn't have risked his life and died. There is no spoon. We already determined that Spoon Boy's purpose with the Ones is to convince them that everything is possible in the Matrix, to lead them into dying and activating the code. But with the artist, it seems that Spoon Boy did a cleanup job, so to speak. His second function, as I mentioned before, the people at the exhibit were horrified by the sculptures. This posed a problem for the simulation because it was breaking the illusion of the Matrix. Any civilian that gazes at the sculptures and panics may start to question reality, which is why the Spoon Boy was sent in to stop the artist and force her to have an internal crisis to stop her from creating any new pieces of art. He didn't kill the artist, which contradicts the theory of him being a Matrix program. Maybe he is a different kind of program that escorts problematic humans in the Matrix out of the simulation, a non-lethal agent. Now with all this info, we kind of know what happened to the Spoon Boy. We got word from the Oracle of a new power rising. That was the last we heard from her. After Matrix Revolutions, there was peace for a while. But then a machine civil war started, where the Oracle and the Architect's side lost against the Analyst side, who then took control of the Matrix and removed all programs that would not be of use in his new version of the simulation. Among the programs removed were the Oracle and the Architect. The Spoon Boy could have fought in the civil war on behalf of the mother and father, and when they lost, he was also erased or transported to another location in the simulation. There is also the possibility that if the Oracle is still alive somewhere, her followers would be with her. But after seeing what happened to Neo and Trinity, the Oracle and the Architect were possibly deleted, along with the Spoon Boy. The Spoon Boy could have been an orphan of Zion, since in Matrix Reloaded he sent Neo a spoon. He you said you'd understand. But the only times we saw him was inside the Matrix, and his demeanor was more of a program than a human whose purpose was to help guide the One. The tragic end of the Spoon Boy is that he may have been erased after the machine's civil war. It's a pity, since it would have been interesting to know more about the boy and discover if he was a program or a human. But do you agree? Tell us what you think could have happened to the Spoon Boy. For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.